Shumai Kroiso, hello and welcome to the Bluebird's Nest, episode 62. Um, and as you can see, on the, the 7th of June of this year, with the, the help of Noel Edmonds, shall we say, we announced the return that deep down I just knew would happen one day for his third spell at the club. This week's special guest, none other than Mr. Alaric Jones. Welcome to the Nest, Al. Thank you for having me, right? Top man. <laughs> It's great to have you on. You, were, I know you weren't happy that I had your fellow teammate and now colleague Dan Hawkins join me last week. So here you are, just a few days yeah, later. I was just saying, no, I was offended at first, but once you told me, I was <laughs> on, I just got a bit nervous. Yeah, I mentioned that similar to Dan, recently taking up a role in off-field goings on at the club, which we will discuss. But as I mentioned there, you've come back to your hometown club for a third spell. Uh, I read up that you first joined the academy at about fourteen. Yeah, uh, 14, 15, maybe, yeah, when, yeah. yeah. Off the back of many years at the Swansea Academy. So uh, let, let's start back then. And in, in your early years, where did it all start out for you, Al? Um, so I started playing, it's weird, all my family are Merlin's Bridge, you probably know, um, but they must not have had a side for my age um, when I was five or six. So I ended up going down to Camrose. Um, do you know Phil Jones coaching down there? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's with Fishguard now, but I was friends with his son um, and a few other boys. So I ended up going down there at about five or six. Um, and then after a season, straight up to Swansea, yeah, some cameras and then up to Swansea. Oh, no hanging about. Fair, fair play. No. Yeah. And the amount of times the players come on and they say, you know, Swans sort of headhunted you or the Cardiff Academy, etc. It's a massive commitment. And I know, obviously, your mum and your dad, Tony, was a, a big supporter of the club. Yeah. A fellow footballer in years gone by, I'm sure many will be aware of, of Tony across yeah. the West, across South Wales, uh, often speak about uh, you know players who've been up to those academies. The amount of times per week you were, you're heading east, and then that's without the fixtures, you know, right across Wales and England, I suppose. Must, must have been a big commitment from the family, that. Yeah, it's it's crazy now looking back. Obviously, as a child, you take it all for granted. Mm. Um, but now seeing like some of my mates, obviously what's he do, having kids and stuff, and working full time, and then even just going home and looking after kids, <laughs> it's hard enough, mate. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like I, said, I took it for granted now. But looking back, like my old man used to take me up there, starts two and then three, and then quickly as four or five. Mm. Takes over his life, like so. Yeah, nice one, Dad. I am. A, I am <laughs> I probably don't tell him enough, but yeah, he must have sacrificed a lot of my mum as well. Do you know what I mean? So mm. yeah, it is a bit. And no, no doubt your sister as well would have been uh, tagged on yeah. along. Well, yeah, my older sister not so much. Maybe my little sister. She must have been to every training ground in Britain. Bless it. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so it couldn't have been too bad. Yeah, you, you left the Swans. Like I said, you came to the academy at Alpha West then at 14. Do remember your first spell at the club back then. Remember it fondly. Or uh, I mentioned your dad, Merlin's Bridge. I should also say, I think your your uncles at Merlin's Bridge, they were probably fuming at the time, expecting you to turn out for them at the bridge, you know, yeah. having played themselves there. And I think they're ex-Bluebirds, the both of them as well. So yeah. You came into pre-season with us as a, a 16-year-old. Uh, Sean Cresser was manager at the time, and I actually played golf with uh, Sean this morning, and his words were, it was easy to bring you into the squad, but it was hard to keep other clubs' hands off you at that time. You were uh, attracting a lot of interest, I will say. Um, but yeah, Dr. Water, I think he was, uh, in, yeah. into senior football. Um, I remember a, a rare occasion up at Port Talbot, I think you'd scored in the first half. Am I right in saying that? Yeah. Um, so you, you took the mantle of being the youngest ever goal scorer from the club at that point. And then, to be fair, I will say, rare occasion that Pems was taken off injured in the second half. Yeah. And you took the armband off him. And uh, you became the club's youngest ever captain too that day. Yeah. What, yeah. Do you Born remember that? My elbow, yeah. <laughs> I remember it was. I, um, you know what Pems is like as well with my old man. Um, so I remember they must they must have just done it for banter, but they give me the yeah. armband anyway at half time. And a Pem's obviously coming off injured, he must have gone in, got changed, come straight out. He batted straight over to the stand, <laughs> got my dad. So I was walking out with the armband on, thinking I was alleged, made the boys behind me as we've come down the tunnel here. My old man stood there with the phone recording oh, me, yeah. gutted. But I mean, no, I remember well that. Our first couple of years down there, I loved it, mate. It was it was unreal. And I gotta say, Crest was class. 
Mm. Like every every Sunday used to drop me a text, just how it went, how it went, sorry, and uh, what you could have done better and stuff. But as a 16-year-old, that's massive, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Um, and still now, every time I see you, Chris, um, I love having a chat with him. We had a good um, good couple of pints at Watsy's wedding last year. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> when I see him. Yeah, he was full of praise of you, like I said, this morning. But I think it was other managers who saw your leadership skills as well, because I know Welsh schools under 18s, captain, I think at youth level as well. And I found this photo of uh, you four seeing Willie at uh, at one of your international ones. So you, you yeah. must have had good good memories of those international honours too. Yeah, it's, it's another thing like hindsight's a wonderful thing, or whatever the saying is. But like at the time, it's just life, isn't it? So you just, it's not, it means nothing to you. Like, not means nothing, but you just yeah. kind of live day to day, don't you? And now looking back, like if I could do it all again, I'd love to. Do you know what I mean? I speak to the younger boys here. Like I know H and Dan have just done similar things. And don't take it for granted because quickly you're you're my age and you're not doing that anymore. But yeah, I loved it. I loved it. it was it was class. Yeah, you're talking like you're a veteran here now. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the great. <laughs> no, to be fair, you were in a. Well, I wouldn't say your peak. You've had many peaks along the way. We'll come on to the, the troughs, if you like. But your performances did catch the eye. And um, our current, I'll say temporary, landlords at the LHP Stadium, formerly known as Richmond Park, they came calling and you signed for Kamad in town. Um, it was your first opportunity to play Cymru Premier. And I did come yeah. to watch a couple of times uh, whenever Half of West weren't playing. And it was, a, well, a good spell for you. You were doing really well. And I think... Well, it came to no surprise that uh, you had an invite to go up to Hull City. Um, yeah. I seem to be saying that on a weekly basis. The amount of Alpha West players who've been up to Hull. But is that was that Tony Panic's influence that got you up to Hull? Yeah, I think it must have been. Um, while I was at Swansea as a child, Tony yeah. was maybe academy director. And I remember my, my parents were always really fond of him. I was I was ill in hospital, remember as a child, and he was I think he was always really good to my parents, supportive and stuff. Obviously, it was it was rough at the time for them, I can imagine. Yeah. Um so they kind of always stayed in contact. Obviously, Alex uh, is my age, so they just bumped into each other at Wales schools, sort of things. Um and I don't know whether I can't imagine he was there just to watch me, but um Tony just ended up being at a few of my games um around that time. And yeah, he was the link then. Um, so I went up there that summer then when I was yeah. 18, 18, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And like I said, unfortunately, a bit of a blip, uh, an ACL injury that ended up keeping you out. I think it was about five months after that trial. Yeah, that, that was my uncle. My uncle it was. Uh, okay. I was. While I was looking at the prep for this, I was having a chat to Dan about it. I've got it on video. It was, it was um, we were playing in sort of like a, you know, when like an under 23s academy side plays like a non-league side. Yeah. Um, so it was the night before the first team we were meant to be going to Marbella, which I was uh, hoping to go on. Just land <laughs> come from come from Alpha West, going to Marbella, and the night before we had a game, <laughs> and uh, yeah, went up for a header, and just my uncle went. Yeah, so that was a rough season then that year. It was, yeah. I think, it was a bit longer than five months. It might have been a bit longer, yeah. but yeah, so terrible timing. But it's yeah. Football, it? yeah, that and that's the brutality of it. I suppose you're right. That is just the way the game goes sometimes. Ouch. Well, obviously, you came back to Kamar then, and I remember, and obviously that was going into the COVID period where, you know, the, the points per game rationale came into it from the FAW. So they got relegated on points per game. Um, yeah. And, you, you know, you were almost just finding your feet back in yeah. that Kamar squad, but with Kamar getting relegated and Alpha West getting promoted, yeah, I suppose your well, must have been one of your first interactions with Wayne Jones then, and what was he came in for you? Yeah, it was. I'd... Um... I'd obviously heard loads about him, and I think I can't remember whether was he at Harford West before. I can't remember. I'm I knew him anyway. I knew him to speak to, and I remember the phone call. Yeah, um, and once I saw Harford West went up, it was obviously a, a no brainer for yeah. me. I was I was I wanted to come back. So yeah, but it's in sort of in parallel, if you like, of when you started studying at Cardiff Met, of course, and yeah. that the lure of that being on your doorstep because at the time I think you were traveling back maybe twice a week for training and games as well it was a big commitment from you you know as a fresher at Cardiff Met I know you lived for a long time with sort of Cymru Premier rivals as well and I, yeah. I remember you having a good bit of banter with them especially when you scored in one of the away games against them I remember that one 
being so close to those boys as well. It was understandable at the at the end of that season, I suppose, with a heavy heart, I'm sure as well. But you signed signed for Met. How was your your Met experience then? It was really good, right? It was like obviously football is what we live for, but it was not just a footballing decision. Do you know what I mean? I was going into my third year of uni. The, mm. the travelling was a lot, and obviously my workload was picking up. Mm. Um, and the year before, I'd done a placement. To, obviously, I did sport management as my undergrad, um, and I did a placement with Beck. So I was around the football club a lot more. Um, mm. And there was kind of, obviously, I wanted to go there and play um, and do well for myself footballing-wise. There was also kind of a way to better myself professionally by being in that environment. Yeah. Um, and I think now looking back, although I obviously had that long-term injury up there, I didn't play as much as I wanted to mm-hmm. in terms of my working career. It's done me a world of good because yeah. I've kind of got this opportunity now back at half Blast, and I can hopefully keep pushing on in the future with with that side of things. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, again, another un- bit of unfortunate luck, another injury at Met. And it did keep you up for a long time. And we caught up a few times when we crossed paths at the... Augie Bridge Meadow or up at King Coy. But I do remember, well, I remember it fondly that we, we caught up the, the playoff semi final. And it, it, it stands out for me, it still makes me laugh that the thought your face was printed 20 foot high behind the, as a backdrop of one of the stands right where we were celebrated. That, that must have been mixed emotions that day, I guess, as well. I know, mate. It was like, it's like both sides. I was living with three Met boys when I was at Harford. So <laughs> I was at it that way. And then once yeah. I was up at Met, it was obviously everyone back home. So my mates mm. at home, and even the boys that were playing. So I remember walking into the ground. I come in late because I didn't want to, obviously I wasn't in the squad. I didn't want to didn't want to be there too early. Um, <laughs> I could see all the Harford rest banners right in front of my face. I thought this could go, this could go bad. And it does. <laughs> It was, it was a painful day, mate. It was painful. I had to put on a brave face because obviously I was speaking to everyone from home. Yeah, yeah, it was rough, mate. It was rough. Yeah, I can imagine. It's still one of my favourite memories of that entire <laughs> period. This when I realised, and I didn't on the day. I didn't notice it so much. It was only really looking back at footage and things like that. And uh, yeah, yeah, that that still makes me laugh. That, but we've quickly uh, touched upon your your current role. Then, so as you said, you're working closely with. Chief Operating Officer, Becky Nuttall, who you know well from your Met days as well. So the ideal job this that, that you've come into. So Club Operations and Partnerships Officer. Uh, what, what does that mean on a day-to-day then? Um, so at Met, I was just doing operations, which is more like day-to-day stuff, making sure the running of the academy and the first team, so stuff like bookings for buses, mm. facilities, Kind of just general stuff that you, you probably wouldn't think happens, but just making yeah. sure all this happen. Um, but long term, I probably want to do more partnership stuff. Um, so when Beck and obviously Rob mentioned this job as a possibility, something really excited me. So the partnerships, obviously, you've probably seen now UFL, the uh, yeah. the new video game, which is really exciting. We've also also got a couple of exciting ones that are yet to be announced. So yeah, sort of managing them, making sure both parties are happy and getting are getting benefits from it. So, yeah, it's good. Fantastic. Yeah, and obviously the UFL one is is a standout one that gained a little bit of traction online. And hearing yeah. whispers about some of all those uh, future plans are as well are really exciting. And often people watch this and we'll have um, some interactions on socials or saying something. How do they contact you? Well, my club email, which will be on the club website, it's a bit of a mouthful, um, so I won't try and read it out now. I'll, <laughs> I'll put it up on the screen for you. Yeah, yeah whack <laughs> it up for me. Um, but yeah, I think it helps as well, obviously, Beck being not from the area and obviously Rob being up in London, I think it helps as well that I'm local. Yeah. Because um, obviously UFL and other potential ones are maybe larger, like more distant businesses, but like we're open to anything and everything as long as it works for both parties both local and further afield so being being from the area helps with that i think i've already kind of had chats with local businesses where you've already got your not your foot in the door but it's nice to recognize a face isn't it so yeah it's yeah. been really good yeah definitely and you know as you've probably heard you know not so long ago we had alpacas and all sorts at the ground so no no pressure to raise the bar on those <laughs> Yeah, with my um, so I'm still finishing my master's in uni, and my uh, I've got to do like a big research project to finish. It's twelve thousand words, so you don't want to know. But <laughs> <laughs> a long story short, I'm doing it on fan engagement, so 
at first I was going to do comparing the English leagues to the Welsh Prem as sort of what we can learn to kind of engage with fans and have yeah. more, eventually get more more people through the door on match days. But the disparity is so big between England and Wales. So I'm now currently looking at loads of American minor leagues. Okay. Um, and it's crazy the stuff they do. You think alpacas is wild, but you should see the lower tiers in America. It's like a carnival on match day. <laughs> It, it needs to be that, do you know what I mean? The, it's yeah, not Premier League level football year, and we know that. So you need to kind of bring more to a match day than just 90 minutes of football. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, eventually now, once we get back down there, I think it's um, a really exciting time. Definitely. Yeah. It's, uh, as much as 12,000 words sounds daunting <laughs> to some point, it's, it's quite exciting you know, and interesting, probably. And that would be, you'll probably have a few people messaging saying, when it's ready, can they read that? Because it would be right. fascinating. Even on a national level, you know, I'm sure the FAW would be yeah. all over that for them. But okay, good luck with all of that. Anyway, uh, back to football in matters. We'll uh, we'll come on to the present day shortly. But I have got to ask you the big question now. And over your three occasions with the club, I want to know your dream bluebird. Lots of players to choose from. Lots of quality uh, attributes that you've played with over your times. But you got selected actually the first time I rolled the question out last week. I don't know whether you've had a chance to see it, but. Mr. Dan Hawkins picked you out for your left foot last week, believe it or not. I asked him earlier, I said, you best to put me for your left foot. He went, not a chance. And I believe <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you okay. got in, but um, Dan's been mentioned several times for either his right foot or his technical ability and everything. Yeah. But you can't pick yourself for some of these. So from <laughs> the three occasions, like I said, it's going to be a tough choice. You're going to have to lose, uh, leave some people out. But... Who's uh, who's having your right foot then? Best right foot you've played with at the club? Um, in terms, of, if I'm going, I'm thinking of trying to like even my player out. So right foot, yeah. I've got someone who's just got a sledgehammer, and obviously <laughs> that's Sheppy. That's who Dan picked last week, to be honest. And yeah, yeah he's uh, he's certainly doing well with his right foot so far this season. Okay, left foot. I'm I'm picking Abu. Abu's. His quality is a joke. Uh, not just he could he could have technical as well. He's his left foot, obviously not the probably not got the range of passing or distance like Sheppy. But if you want it to be put on a spot, I think Abu's your man. Um, I felt bad. I was thinking about it honestly. Owen Jones, if I had both his feet, I'd be happy. I still don't know. <laughs> yeah. In training last night, and I can't work out which way I want to show him. Like he's deadly off both feet. It's it's crazy. Fantastic. So, yeah, yeah somebody asked me the other day actually, is is he yeah. right or left footed? And I think I went for left, but obviously he scored with his left last weekend. But yeah, multi talented. Taking free kicks last night after training, and honest to God, takes free kicks off both feet depending on where it is. It's mad. Mad. Yeah, hidden talent that then. Yeah. Uh, aerial ability. It's only one man for the job. <laughs> 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 um, he would murder you if you didn't pick him, I think. No, I know, I thought that. But now nah, he is. I've never seen anyone so unathletic but jump so high. It's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, God, I, could, I could do with some lessons with him. His timing is unbelievable. And just the way he used to hang in the air. Mm. Somewhere. He's the best header I've ever seen, let alone let alone play with for the last genuine years. So yeah. we'll play two pounds. Well, <laughs> what a quote that is. I love that. <laughs> yeah, well. uh, technical ability next then. I oh no, I didn't struggle this one. I did act, I was thinking about it for five, ten minutes, but then he came into my head and he's definitely the man. Uh Kieran Lewis. Things he used to train in, he used to me look silly i remember the first time we trained with him i hadn't met him before we were coming down in the car from cardiff together obviously he's a round the boy yeah. and got me three four times put me on my bum and uh, <laughs> rolled into the corner and reminded me about it for two hours home so yeah that one he comes to mind what a player yeah very good ability and often gets picked for that question to be fair yeah the talker this is the one i struggled with i think at Met, we, at Met last season, there was a lot of like really vocal boys in terms of noise. Do you know what I mean? Whereas down here, both Sheppy and Dillard, obviously they're unreal leaders, but they're not screamers, screamers and shouters, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so again, just from my experience and probably because I played next to him, I probably would pick Pems just for, as, as a 16, 17 year old, he used to talk me through games. 
used to make me laugh as well. But yeah, prob I'd probably pick Benz again. He's had two nods. Incredible, incredible. He's paying you. I didn't want to, honestly. I didn't want to give him the satisfaction, but. It was fair dues. And the final one, then the footballing brain. Yeah, I I don't know for this one. Cares would be up there again in terms of like seeing things that no one else seems as uh, scenes sees. Um, but I think obviously I've only played with him shortly here, but having played with him for two years, I'd probably give it to Maka. Okay. Kai McCarthy. He can play left back, left wing back, centre back, centre midfield, number ten. I mean, you've seen the goal he scored here from number ten. He oh. can play anywhere on the pitch. He's like, yeah. I think he's just he's so calm and just sees things quickly and yeah, Maka. Awesome. Yeah, fair play. Yes, uh, he's had two picks. He was picked last week as well. To be fair to him, um, that was. Consider yeah, considering he's yeah. Uh, not long been at the club and he's been yeah. in. Camry League's team of the week as well. So he's not having a bad start. And I said to Dan Hawkins last week, actually, after he picked the player, I said, oh, we could do with this Dream Bluebird uh, or elements of it up at Carnarvon. And it was obviously Sheppy's right foot that got the assist on the first goal. So hopefully, uh, perhaps some part of your Dream Bluebird can have a, a positive influence over the next few days. Uh, yeah, next few days. I say that because it is uh, a busy one this weekend. Penabont tomorrow night at our temporary home of the LHP Stadium in Carmarthen. First home league fixture. So the debut, I think, of our blue kit is imminent. Sponsored, obviously, by Gethley Moore. Um, after two fantastic away wins at Connors Key and Carnarvon, it's teed up to be a cracker tomorrow night, Al. So what's the feeling in the camp amongst the boys now then? Positive. I know it's cliche, but it, it genuinely really is. Um, like the group of boys we've got, I think even if we'd have picked up four points, we'd have been in a really good place going into this fixture. Yeah. I think obviously our waveforms started off really well, but I think being in Carmarthen, I think we need to go and really get three points at home. I mean, it's temporary, but it's our home. Mm -hmm. um, to get into the top six, your home form's massive. So whether that's here or up at Carmarthen, it needs to be needs to be three points. Obviously, they're a good side, and we know that. Um, we're lucky we we probably got their footage from the from the ferry game, which I watched, having and not been involved. And they're a good side. You know what to expect with Penabon. Um, yeah. I think if we play our game and uh, play like we did the last two games, I'm sure we'll be all right. Yeah, fingers crossed. It is always a good game against Panabon. So looking forward to that one. And then perhaps, well, more specifically for you, it's uh, a return to Cardiff Met on Monday afternoon where we will have a Bluebirds Nest live commentary on that game. So how, how are you feeling about that one? You know, such a quick, and obviously Macca as well, a quick return there. Good. I'm uh, I'm excited. I'm obviously, do you know CJ Craven? Oh, of them, obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, we've obviously lived together all for uni. We've still got a flat together, um, and we get the uh, we get our the keys on the first of September. So I haven't told them yet, but um, there's one bedroom that's a lot nicer than the other. So I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking whoever gets the three points gets the pick. But um, we'll see how he feels. But now positive again. I think it's, it's nice to go and play against your mates, against teams you've been at. Mm. Don't get me wrong, I'd, I'd love to smash them. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Brilliant. Oh, I love it. So if you scored, tell me, would you celebrate? Oh, I'm knee sliding. I'm knee sliding. <laughs> on, the 3G, on the 3G, kissing the badge. But no, oh, no, I would. No. I don't score enough to not celebrate when I do. So Quite right. Yeah. Quite right. Because to be fair, when you did score against them, it was a loss on the day. I think we lost 3-2, but yeah. you uh, you got the second on the day. And it was a sort of semi-celebration, wasn't it? Because you sort of yeah. you wanted to get well, the ball and carry on. We were three one down, but um, no, we yeah we were three one down. Yeah, I think, and yeah. I still had to make it three two, so I, I couldn't do too much. But all my, all my mates from uni were along the side, so I had to give them a bit, didn't I? Yeah, I remember. I remember. Well, fingers yeah. crossed that you can get on the score sheet in in both games. That'd be ideal. That would be ideal. Um, because like I said, we we sit in top of the league at the moment, and you know, whilst we've got to keep our feet grounded to some extent, I, I can't help but be really optimistic about the next thirty odd league games that. Uh, it's a really exciting time to be involved with the club and obviously wish you well for your new role on off the field as well as when you get on the field as well. And uh, really good to chat, mate. Really appreciate your time. Best of luck with all and uh, roll on tomorrow night. Thank you very much, Roy.